So something a little bit different today. This will be the first video and I'm going to create a playlist and it's going to be all about the Stanwall Park Viaduct. So a couple of weeks ago I was fortunate enough to actually see the Stanwall Park Viaduct up close and personal. So in just a moment, I'm going to take you over to the viaduct and this video is going to be about the introduction of it. I'm going to sort of show you what I've sort of done to date. I'm going to share some of those ideas that are floating in my head on how I'm going to take this diorama build forward and some of the techniques I'm sort of thinking. I guess the first thing I'm going to show you what I've actually completed now is when you look at the support structures, I've actually filled in each of the sides you can see here and then to the back so they're actually now flush now you might be wondering or you might be asking why didn't i do that in the first place i think when i built and decided to build the curved viaduct i was restricted to the size of the wood off the shelf from bunnings and also i didn't quite know what technique I was going to use uh, for the skinning. So I sort of left some options open and thought, well, if I needed to, I could come back and fill it in. Now, the good thing is from the last video, I reported that I got myself just a cheap table saw and all I needed to do was just sort of measure these gaps. Uh, unfortunately, they weren't all the same. So each one had to be measured and then cut separately. But anyway, that job's done. With that said now, now that they're flush, uh, what technique I'm going to use moving forward is, I guess the skinning now uh, has some meat to sort of be glued onto from the bottom to the top, and that'll be on each of the, the piers of this viaduct. <laughs> And you can sort of see there, I'll put a photograph on now. That's not a photograph that I will be using because as you can see here, this escarpment rock is actually on the wrong side. I just did this just for a bit of an example to sort of see what it was looking like. So it was a bit of an experiment and I got it really cheap actually. So, you know, I haven't really lost a lot of money, but it's actually given me a lot of great ideas moving forward. On one of my previous videos, I sort of talked about this scene and what it was going to look like. Now I can reveal my plans for this section. So it will have some type of backdrop print like I have here, but obviously it's gonna be more bushland. Uh, that was sort of, you know, prototypical of what's in front of the viaduct. And that will sort of stretch from that end all the way over to that end. And then what will happen from there is this top section here to this structural beam over here, this is gonna be filled in you know, with three millimeter MDF board. So it's just going to call, I'm gonna fill it in with a base of that material. And what I'm hoping to pull off here is now, it's really gonna be dependent, make sure I can get the right picture here. But you'll see a lot of the trees and the tree tops are sort of reaching up here and beyond. Now, this level here, I do plan 
to actually do so a lot of scenery up there with treetops and so down here along here there'll be a whole bunch of trees and bushland which will sort of blend in with the photo drop and then on top here you'll see the top of the trees which are scenic uh, and then obviously here leading up to level three will be another backdrop there and it'll be maybe a bit of mountain and sky above the tree lines here so look it's it's going to be interesting i'm going to do a hell of a, a lot of experimenting on that one and i'm sort of hoping it sort of turns out how i've got it pictured in my head it'll sort of give a, a 3d look and feel i'm sort of hoping and hopefully fairly unique because i haven't really seen anything like that anywhere to date let's move on to the front and the back face of the viaduct skinning now the skinning is going to be all one piece both from the front point of view and the back point of view and i'll show you down here this is actually what i've been doing the weekend just past and that is actually the front face what you can see right there now you can see there i've sort of roughed in the viaduct shape and all these arches need to be cut out these sides over here they'll only come down so far because i don't actually need this whole leg here because obviously the the hill or the mountains sort of come down like that to the middle on both sides so i'm sort of hoping the weekend coming I'll get an opportunity to cut all these out now i'd imagine it's going to be a bit of a slow job because i want it to be uh, as accurate as possible and not to sort of go outside the lines or inside the lines i should say so i will be taking my time on that one to get it cut really well now nothing is the same as far as measurements go um, i actually had to put this board that one there up against this viaduct and you can probably see these lines here which I'll sort of get in each center piece of these structural beams here and as my starting point when I was sort of designing and drawing uh, onto the MDF board. Everything both from a front face and the back face fascia is all bespoke and obviously I need to go through the same exercise for the back one once I start drawing that up. I notice that since I've been sort of doing a little bit more work on the viaduct, I'm actually going to need to come back and do a few little modifications. And one being over this side. So if you can imagine this stick here is the wall on the viaduct. Now that will go up to that spot there. Now, unfortunately, both sides are equal and you can see there that's not going to quite work over here so i'm going to cut a little bit more away on this side um, just to get it sort of right and to sort of give me a little bit room over here when i'm modeling this side of it and as you can see there it is a quite a tight squeeze there so i just want to give myself a little bit more room especially when it comes to the scenic stuff that i'll be modeling and the same goes for this side and i'll probably actually cut away a bit more of this um, this side as you can see there that's the last that's where the wall will be on the viaduct and obviously the other side will be the same this side over here starts to roll away quite a lot sooner than what i've got here set up with the framework so i'm actually going to be cutting this right back and this one down a little bit uh, when i come to do my scenic so there you know there, there is that rolling hill so yeah so there's just a couple of modifications i do need to make to this viaduct as I move forward. So one of the techniques that I'll be using moving forward, well at least I'll be experimenting moving forward. So once I got the the front face and the back face on, obviously there's going to be questions on well how are you going to then fill in you know all the areas that need to be filled in. Now I've got a bit of an idea so I will already have these the skinning done on the front and the back. You know I'm going to have these guides here you know, all these guides here on both the back and the front. So what I'm sort of thinking of, the spaces in between, 
I'm thinking of using foam. So sort of filling this area here with a foam block and then coming in uh, with my foam cutter and sort of using the edges of these back and front ones as a guide to get a smooth arch. And then basically, you know, depend on what I line it with, you know, the shape's already there, I can just glue it to the foam. Anyway, we'll see how that goes and hopefully that experiment uh, will actually pay off for me. There it is there and you can sort of see all the weathering, you know, and all the lime, calcium deposits over the years that sort of built up. So obviously later on I'll be weathering, but I'm trying to just get the base, the core base colour of the brick. In my trip I actually took a close up shot of the brickwork. Now this is probably more underneath or in the arch area. Um, which seems to be a little bit different to what it looks like on the, the outside of the viaduct. But anyway, that's a close up for some of the brickwork that I took. And then obviously I've been experimenting now. That's one sample I've been working on. Um, I've got a photo here. And then obviously I've got another one. I mean, you sort of look at some of these photos, you know, there's all sorts of colours I can see in there. You know, a mixture of browns, there's even a touch of purple. Um, you know, outside of the, the weathering. This was another one, another different colour I sort of did. And obviously I don't think I've got that brick quite right. It's almost like that, but not the correct colour. So there's a lot more experimenting I'm doing on the brickwork. And maybe I'm going over the top, but um, I just want to get it pretty close and where I'm sort of happy with it. So we'll see how that progresses. I'm going to do some more samples of bricks. So I thought I'd just place this on to give you a bit of a look against the viaduct here. Um, now just bear in mind this sheet is actually back to front so this drawing actually faces the other side but I just wanted to sort of show you what it might look like. Imagine where those lines are all drawn at the moment sort of seen through the arches that will give you some idea and the extent of the size of it. So there you have what I've done to date. Now I'm sort of hoping this weekend I'll actually get that front fascia cut out and get that on. I'm really looking forward to it to start to take that shape. And then from there, we'll just continue with that build. I'm gonna take a bit of a break from updates on the layout. Uh, I think doing all that uh, sub road bed, doing the track, all that type of stuff. So I feel a little bit nuts at the moment. The next few weeks I thought I might just give full attention to this viaduct and get that up and running. 